welcome to the Industry Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. We're back to the land of huge heads and tiny bodies. Um, that describes Japan's animation. Um, which one now? Oh, super kawaii desu! <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, senpai! Nani yo! <laughs> Why do you torture me so? Oh, oh sefi chan, <laughs> daijoubu! <laughs> I'm... I'm about ready to leave this podcast before it even begins. <laughs> and also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. I am dying a little inside every day. Poison. Today is also one of those days. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, well, okay, Niku. In today's episode review, we are going to go to the human world of Equestria Goals. And this time we are going to review their latest well not really their latest special but one of their special which is dance magic we're not doing movie magic and uh oh no you know yeah kind of but you know what we are going to go for all three um dance magic what was it again movie magic and mirror magic yep we're gonna go for all three in a row because they're kind of simple and i'm hoping that we can get them done asap but we're going to start off with move, uh, Dance Magic first. And in this special, Rarity signs the Rain Boom up for a music video competition to raise money for Camp Everfree's repair. However, the Crystal Prep Academy, the Shadow Bolts, sign up for the same competition and steal Rarity's music video idea. Well, ain't they jerks? So before we head into this one, uh, what do you guys think of the uh, no, the special First impression, sorry, by the way. Silver. Of the three specials, this was the one I was least invested in. Uh, it's Don't get me wrong, it's nice to see the uh, Crystal Prep characters again, uh, except for Indigo Zap. Don't know why she took took her leave, but eh, there you go. It's always fun to see Rarity have an emotional breakdown because the ice cream industry goes up by three points. <laughs> Yay. But this feels like Saved by the Bell. All these kids, they they have this massive budget for uh, production and all these costumes. And you're just like, why are you trying to raise money when you could afford to do this? This is outside the realm of the public school limited budget struggle that I think you're supposed to be working with. <laughs> you know, and oh, those crystal prep kids, they think they're so great because they're so rich. Well, you can produce this video. You're rich, too. And of course... The fact that they reward the Crystal Prep for stealing their uh, their idea, and so everybody can win, is just like, it's the same problem I had with friendship games. It's okay to lose. It, it doesn't feel fun, but it's not the end of the world. And uh, when they're like, oh, everybody wins, it's like, no. Hmm. No, if everybody wins, then you all lose a chance for growth. There's nothing super wrong with it. It's just not my thing. Uh, but I do feel there's a rebuttal to your thing here, Silver. But when we get to that part, and I, if I remember, I'll try and talk about it. And Seppi, what about you? I remember nothing from the special. I was bored and trying to get to the last special as fast as I could because I just didn't really care. It was a typical plot, and I don't know. I felt like I could predict it from a mile away. And I did. Alrighty then. Uh, well, and as for me, I like this special. Like, this special was fun. At least we got a reason for the music. The, um, what would you call this? Dance magic? Yeah, the, this song was in the, uh, what? Equestria Girls, the Friendship Game special song. It was one of the first three songs that was played before the song for the, um, movie happened. So I was kind of, weirded out by that fact but still it was mm, cool other than that the story was kind of okay like yeah everybody has an idea execute idea then rarity steals money <laughs> not really steals but everybody gives rarities the money to execute plan with a times four game which is kind of okay but mm, you know i'll bring that up again when we start reviewing this because yeah but anywho uh with that out of the way, let's hit into the review. If you have not watched this episode yet or special, stop here and go take a watch. Welcome back. Um, how did you like it? I hope you like it. 
So anywho, we start off with a car wash. Like any good fundraiser show, we need to start off with a car wash. Yes, give the give the fan artist ideas about uh, all girls car wash. Oh uh, yeah. We wouldn't get the swimsuit thing until a little while later, but here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you have to be kid friendly, so uh, <laughs> yeah, N- none none of those really alluring car washers. You know what I mean? I'm thinking more of what was it that Hardy's Burger ad? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I never seen that. So let's see here: Hardy's Burger ad, car wash. So, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Paris I Hilton. Don't we know what you're talking about. <laughs> Paris Hilton in a bikini doing a car wash. They were exploiting her like no one's business. And then all of a sudden, she just has a, a cheeseburger. There's no purpose other than the cheeseburger. Well, now cheeseburgers. I guess David Hasselhoff wouldn't have been the proper uh, model for it. <laughs> oh, well. But we all know how, how he likes cheeseburgers. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, with the car wash idea done, since there's no more cars left in Crystal, sorry, uh, in Cantalot High, they try and find another idea. Because, uh, let's see, the car wash idea was Applejack and Sunset's idea, um, Rainbow Dash, and who now? Pinkie Pie had some Bake Off thing. I, I don't really remember the whole thing. And no, sorry. Uh, I think, oh, wow, I am forgetting a few things here because it was kind of, yeah. Twilight, sorry, uh, let's see. Twilight and Fluttershy had a pet care s- service thing. Um, Pinkie Pie had a Bake Off. And then, like I mentioned before, Sunset and Applejack had uh, the car wash ideas. What did Rainbow Dash do? You guys remember? Let's see here. Pinky already hosted a bake sale. Twilight and Fluttershy had the doggy daycare. Best option, in my opinion, because mm-hmm. I love dogs. And Sunset and Rainbow did the car wash. So, yeah, it's on rarity to come up with the next phase. They're only halfway mm-hmm. to Camp Everfree. And this is to rebuild the damage that Pinkie Pie did. Yeah, thank you, Pinkie Pie. That Pinkie Pie did? I thought it was for Gloriosa. It- do you remember what they mentioned? Because it was to... What was the synopsis I read? Uh, repair... Uh, Camp Everfreeze repairs. Like, most of it was kind of done at the end of the uh, movie. Until... Uh, well, you know, I'm just blaming Pinkie Pie for stuff. <laughs> but yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Very, it, it's very possible that Camp Everfree is just now in even greater debt. <laughs> so they're... So there's Phil, Filthy Rich going, oh, I'll get you this time. Arr, I'm such a jerk in this universe. Uh, I could have gotten away if, if it were for you meddling kids and your stupid dog. What dog? Oh, right. Spike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and talking about Spike, Spike, well, kind of leans in on to Rarity and says, you don't have an idea to help, do you? And she panics and freaks out. And after three hours, she goes to the mall looking for inspiration. And guess what? Inspiration hits her in the face in an ad saying that there's a music video competition going on and you can win cash prizes. Cash prizes, baby. Woo! Glittery prizes. Yeah. So she goes and signs in the rain booms to win said competition. And and guess what? She meets up with some old friends. The Shadow Bolts. Ooh. Again, minus Indigo's app, which I find curious same here same here I, i'm wondering that too like is she away doing sports is she sick or did she bail from crystal prep well they they mentioned that principal cinch has been let go and now dean cadence is now principal cadence i don't remember them saying that dean cadence sorry um principal cinch was let go i, I think she retired or something like no mention of her no she was let go <laughs> Did they say that? Well, actually, all they really say is things at CPA have never been better since Principal Cadence took over. Yeah, that's what I remember. That's the line. So we assume that the Principal Cinch, Cinch got fired or retired because she couldn't handle no, the stress. No, no. Of... Same thing. She got fired. Well, look, 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 you're saying she's that old. <laughs> well, Norman, look at it this way. Uh, likely she was trying to explain to the family, look, the only reason we didn't crush Catalot High is because they had winged members who flew around giant plants and a talking dog. 
At that point, she's probably in a padded cell. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to lean in retire. I, I like that happy moment. Like, she deserves her retirement or pension fund. Yep. I think she deserves a padded self. That's just me. <laughs> yes. So, uh, anywho, um, uh, let's see. Uh, the Crystal Prep students, um, who here? <laughs> wow, I am not good with their names. I only remember Sugarcoat because she's so blunt. I remember Lemon Zest because she was kind of out there. Uh, but yes, let's see. We got Sunny Flare, Sour Sweet, Sugar Coat, and Lemon Zest. Wow. So yeah, we got the four of them in this group. So yeah, anywho, I'm going to guess that I won't be mentioning them by name. Uh, they mentioned that they're going to participate in the contest for their own school because they want to hold their, what you're going to call this, summer or prom night at a boat. Am I right? Yes. Uh, oh, how tragic they're trying so hard to raise money for a prom on a boat wow saving a camp or spoiling yourselves rotten hey. who should i root for hey silver you, you priorities man priorities if you're rich and famous you're gonna have a party on the boat baby Woo! i'm on a boat <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm on a boat uh, we can't sing that song because of you know <laughs> uh but still so Rarity blurs out her idea, and with that, the Crystal Prep girls kind of, well, smile at the yeah, prospect of learning what Rarity got in store. We move on to the next scene. We go to the music room at CHS. And Rarity uh, describes her plan, saying that, Yo, guys, I need money to start off this idea, and the specific amount is all of the money we raise, so give it up. And the group asks why and what do you need it for? And she explains. And Twilight did some calculation and says, Hmm, if we win, and that's a big if, we'll times four our earning, which is way beyond enough to get Camp Everfree up and Adams. And everybody agrees. But before that, Twilight Sparkle did mention that that is if we win, and this is a very stupid, stupid idea. But what do I know? I'm a cartoon character. There's just not a lot to say. They're, they're even being very honest. Like, we're not very good at this. True, true. And, well... Uh, like, they're tripping... What is it? Pinkie Pie says, we're tripping over our own boots. <laughs> yep. Because, like, with any bad idea, adventures are hit. So, yeah, they go for rehearsal and, oh my gosh, the stage set that they have is terrible. Terrible indeed. Terrible. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to summarize everything here because they fumble. They fumble real hard. Uh, Star Sunset accidentally tore up one of Rainbow Dash's jacket and Rarity goes into a panic and goes to the mall to find materials to well fix it. And she noticed the Crystal Pep girls doing a similar concept idea to hers in the mall. And oh! The girls from Crystal Prep stole her idea. Oh, the heresy. Oh, the horror. Oh. Kill them. <laughs> Not yet, Silver. Not yet. Uh, so she sends a message to the girl saying that there's an emergency meeting at her home. And everybody asks, yo, Rarity, what's up? What's the emergency? And she describes that the Crystal Prep girls are really, really bad girls. They stole her idea and there's no chance to... Kind of, you know, win. And, well, they kind of cheer her up saying that we have a plan. Let's see what we can do. And Rarity says, let's go. I'm going to confront the Crystal Prep girls. Like, I need to tell them what for. And ask Twilight to join her in her adventure to school the, what you call this, Crystal Prep girls. Yes. <coughs> All I want is for Rarity to say, they took our jeeves. <laughs> oh, wow. But uh, let's hit to Crystal Prep because there's nothing much you can say here. I mean, um, Rarity goes to Crystal Prep and says that you girls are big bad cheaters. You stole my idea. Shame on you. And the girl says, oh, too bad. We already submitted our idea. So you can, you better find something original. Ha <laughs> ha. And yeah. 
meeting at the music room part 2 and finding a backup plan. And said backup plan was terrible because nobody here knows anything. Yep. Well, we get some fun fun visuals at least. Oh yeah, I, that sunset cowboy dress is awesome. That's all I have to say. It's really awesome. Yeah, but that's me. I'm thinking more of the Pinkie Pie Space Odyssey. Yeah, that's cute. That's the greatest. <laughs> yep. But but yeah, Applejack's looking for any reason to get her friends to dress up country like. Yep, yep. Uh, Although Rainbow, it, would Rainbows count as a very stylized Mexican ensemble? Um, I'm more thinking of the good, the bad, and the ugly. The, that's a punch show, you know? The good, the bad, and the rainbow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, with that, uh, Rarity says, your idea sucks. There's no music in it. It's just stuff jumbled together. And Rarity goes crashing in ice cream depression. Uh, and this is cute. Nom, nom, nom. Well, like I say, every, to- every time Rarity has a bad day, you should invest in the ice cream market. They will enjoy, and then you can sell stock at a profit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but she overhears the Crystal Prep girls talking about how they don't have an original music for their music video. So we got the moves done right, we got the fashion done right, but we got no music. And hearing this, Rarity comes over and propose a merger, which benefits everyone. A collab. Collaboration. Yes. A collab. Uh... Yes. Although right now all I'm thinking is we need a Ben and Jerry's salty tears. <laughs> oh gosh. Why are you reminding me of Avengers? Because we like a very, very Hulk. <laughs> oh wow. Anywho. With that, the girls agree and they start re- shooting their video with a combination of dance move by the Crystal Prep Girls and music by the Rainbooms. And the budget set for um, the Crystal Prep Girls. Because look at that stage. It's amazing and expensive. Really, really expensive. And again, I kind of wonder why they need all the help. Everything they can afford all this. No, no high schooler should have this budget unless they're like Richie Rich. Or a private school, which Crystal Prep is. Which point they'll be like, how could you let those other pe- other classes in now we can only afford the tiny yacht oh wow senpai hoity toity is not gonna approve uh but still music video is pretty awesome i do like the visuals on this one and with that uh, we're assuming that they won right yeah it's i find it fun that rarity specified the prize money is more than double what they need so even if they split it they get enough. So, yeah. They went out of their way to say everybody wins. And, again, it's like everybody wins. It's I'm going to sound like a bitter old man about this. But the, what's with these kids today? Everybody wins. Everybody gets a participation award. Where are you kids today? But <laughs> the, my logic here is that um, they're pulling out strengths from each other because the Crystal Prep girls really know how to dance while the Rainbooms know how to sing. So why risk the chance of failing while you can strengthen your chance of winning? That, that's my view. And what they're doing is kind of the logical thing. Because when you risk the chance of failure, you also grow as a person. You grow you go braver. When you're always if you're afraid of failure, you're not going to you're not going to give your all. True, but if somebody's expecting you to bring in gold and, you know, do stuff, uh, make that chance higher, I say it. And besides, what, didn't we have the last roundup to complain about that? Or no? The last roundup. The last roundup was which one again? I'm kind of forgetting. That's it for Applejack. Applejack. Season two. Um, yeah, she she wouldn't come home and she never got a gold medal, which just showed that Mayor Mayor was a really bad at her job. Hmm. Putting pressure. I mean, really, really bad. I don't think we reviewed that one. Like, uh, you weren't on the reviewer crew then. Like, that was way back. Well, then. duh. But I mean, like, you know, there's the last roundup. Who? Oh yeah. But still, this is of? just entertaining. <laughs> this is just entertaining. And yes, uh, I'm just going to wrap it up here. Um, the girls. Sorry. Um, who is this person? Uh, one of the crystal prep girls say that. Oh, um. 
she wants to do something about dresses and go on boats and Rarity proposed that, hey, I got an idea for dresses and also maybe you need some entertainment on the boat. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, ring booms can sing for you, nudge, nudge. Oh, ever the opportunist. Yes, and episode ends. Let's kind of give our, uh, what was it again, um, final thoughts on this one ASAP because we need we have other tools to go. So, Silver, think. What's right? Um, Silver, what do you think? Oh, so Silver, think. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> I'm processing very, very fast, Norman. <laughs> Sorry. It's a fun short. It doesn't really make the characters stand out to me. The Crystal Prep are still basically the opposite of the main, of the human six. And that ain't a bad thing. It's just, eh, you, they're there. Uh, I, I guess I'm not as smitten by the musical. Ultimately, it's the same problem I had with, uh, with friendship games. I enjoy My Little Pony because it's this fantasy world where even just a project that is not magically based still seems rather extraordinary uh, because of the ponies. This one, it's a high school drama, except that it's not like Glee Club drama. It's just Saved by the Bell, which I found I didn't relate to. I'll tell you, uh, I can tell you guys a quick story. In college, while working on a project... Somehow we got on the topic of shows we watched. And when I mentioned uh, Gargoyles, mm -hmm. one of my classmates started laughing at me. He said, oh, you were watching Gargoyles at that age? He's like, what were you watching? Oh, Saved by the Bell. And I just thought to myself, nighttime protectors who battle criminals, supernatural powers, and a millionaire's robots. Don't forget racists. And racists. <laughs> The, the next evolution of the clan. <laughs> yep. But versus a bunch of high schoolers who have a cause of the day and their most memorable feat is the caffeine pills I'm so excited <laughs> song. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Which do you think stands out, is sounds more appealing the way I say it? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm biased. This is my oh, no, I'm uh -huh. never. Uh, all right. But still. So it's the same. It's the same feat where My Little Pony seems more extraordinary than Equestria Girls for setting and conflicts, and so I'm just not as invested in this as I would be if uh, they put a pony spin on it somehow. But there's nothing offensively wrong about it either. It's just fun. And uh, Seppi, what about you? I found it boring, didn't I say that earlier? <laughs> okay. Oh. Ever so blunt. I know. Oh. Ooh, Safi getting all Sundre on us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my god. No, Silver. <laughs> oh, Safi Chan! Kill me! Later, later. But anywho, as for me, I like this one. Um, the setup for the fundraiser was a fun idea. Meeting up with the Shadow Bolts was, a f was fun too. Shadow Bolts? Yeah. Yep. That's what they're called. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. Yep. Huh. So anywho, uh, that I was mentioning, yes, meeting up Shadow Bots was fun, except Indigo Zap, where did she go? Questions arise. But hey, um, looking at the girls dressing up in new outfits was kind of cool, because somehow shows that give the characters more than one attire to wear is always fun. Um, example is Cut Captain Sakura. If you watch that show, Sakura always changes clothes every episode, so that's good. Yay. Shows that they have budget. But when you find out why she dresses in clothes, oh, this is not appropriate for children. We'll have to change these characters' actions oh, gosh. for America. <laughs> America. Uh, look at my invisible gun. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, what was I again? Ah, uh, yes. Although, oh, although I, I just figured out where Indigo Zap went. Where? She's watching over Principal Cinch's padded cell. <laughs> She got a part-time job at the mental ward. Oh gosh! Alrighty then. Uh, so anyway, uh, that was saying. Um, I like me. I like the characters meeting up. The story, yeah. And music was not bad. I, I like the music. Um, kind of biased because I bought the album and I, finally I get to saw the music video and stuff. So I like this one. It was like when Silver mentioned, harmless, nice, harmless fun. So let's head on to the next one. And next one is movie magic. In this special, the Equestria girls are invited to the set of the upcoming Daring Do movie, but a mystery soon unveils at the film studio 
when some important prop goes missing. Ooh. Ooh. And then, then they're the kids, and these mailing kids and their dog. Yep. So anywho, uh, first impressions, Silver. I feel like the, the chief focus for this was simply to get them, the human six dressed up as the power ponies. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's like, it's a movie. Sure. People's careers will take a hit if this goes down, but it's not like end of the world stuff. Oh, true. It's more, oh, we're, we're, we're getting a special privilege because we're so awesome. Not really. They did explain the reason why. They help save Camp Everfree. True. But it's true what you mentioned. Like, <laughs> the only reason why this special exists is just to put the girls in the Power Pony outfit. And, su- yeah. and Sunset in the Maniac, which I thought was a clever <laughs> Yeah. But when you find out the uh, head villain's uh, logic or the reason why she does what she does, you're just like, that's a stupid plan. I know. You're stupid. It's a stupid plan, and it's petty as hell. Stop being stupid. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, Seppi, what do you think? I actually somewhat remember what happened in the special. Uh, lots and lots of rainbow geeking out. That's pretty much the gist of it. How I feel. Mm-hmm. True, nice. Right? I didn't really like the villain at the end. Like, yeah, I agree with Silver. It was stupid and pointless, and just. Why? Well, she Why? is still 18. So I'm just guessing that her stupid idea to... You know what? When we go into the final thoughts, we'll talk about it. Uh, as for me, this one was not bad. I kind of enjoyed it. Um, Rainbow geeking out was fun. and there's a lot- Oh, I enjoyed it way more than the last special, but still, it, it was still stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but hey, this one was fun. Um... And you know what? Let's head into it then. So we start off the episode with the girls on a movie set and Rainbow destroying the scene by screaming. Yes. There's a reason why they say quiet on set. Yes, but there's but there's also a reason why they say Rainbow's on set. Expect, expect interruptions. Oh, yeah, but still... Uh, I don't know. Like, as a... <laughs> Silver, you work in the film industry, right? Once before? I worked in uh, video production, not quite the same as film. Ah, all right. So what happened when somebody interrupts a recording or shooting? What would happen? They'd be escorted off the stage. I know, yeah. I'm just wondering, why was Rainbow here, you know, still on set after the first few disturbance? Because this in this world, you're given much, much, much more leeway. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but anywho, the reason why the girls are there, because I was wondering, hey, um, how did the girls get on set? Did they won the, what you call this, music video thing, and they got a tour on set or something like that? Oh, no, no, no. It's because that the film director here, quote-unquote Steven Spielberg, but not really, is a Camp Everfree alumni. And since the girls managed to save the camp, they got invited to the movie set. Hey, that's cool. I have to bring up something up. Sorry, I have to bring something up. Mm-hmm. If some of the alumni for Camp Everfree are rich people, why couldn't they help Camp Everfree? Uh, same reason, like when uh, what was it? Made in Manhattan. They people come up with excuses. <laughs> it's unfortunate, but we we tell ourselves, oh, we don't have the time, or we can't do X, Y, or Z, and so people don't help. <laughs> The way they could. But you just have to write a check. And that's why they're terrible people. Or unless sit director here is like Tommy Why So, who doesn't have a buck yet. You're tearing me apart, Rarity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> so, anywho, the girls are excited to be on the movie set and they go their separate ways to, you know, look at the things that interest. <laughs> they, they broke up? No, they split oh, up. Oh. oh, it's so sad. They went their separate ways. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, the shipping. Oh, no. But anywho, uh, first separation, we get to see Fatashai and Rarity meet up with the actress who's going to play the ring due. Chestnut Magnifico. So, Chestnut Magnifico here is going to play the role of Daring Do. And... Rarity and Fluttershy 
hope to go see her and, you know, mingle because Rarity wants her autograph while Fluttershy wants her to sign a partition to add more bird feeders at CHS? Yeah, that'll really mean a lot. Yeah, somehow. Bird feeders. It's a good plan. I'm trying to remember that a movie about college and there were all these protesters. What happened to Saving the Rainforest? Oh, that was last week. <laughs> yeah, but hey, um, it seems that Chestnut Magnifico here is really, really angry. And she says that she wants to be out in the contract or something like that. Basically, she's sounding like every other entitled actor or actress. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's very, very mean, but there's a reason. And anywho, let's head on to the next crew. And we get to see Sunset Shimmer and Applejack admire the set and are amazed at how, well, amazing the set can be. They just only set it up, well, what, a week away and it looks so realistic. That, that is a question. I guess the filming on location is not a thing in this universe. So yeah, they're checking out the set and everything looks realistic, except that we, the audience, well, we see any other set we would see. Everything looks, you know, the same cartoonish style. It'd be funny if, uh, I wonder how they get the uh, the sky to look realistic when it's just a matte background. I'm thinking of those really older movies. Or, uh, what was it, Jet Li and Jackie Chan, Journey to the West, where you could tell they were they were in a sound studio rather than on location. Mm. And we are introduced to Juniper Montage, who's so excited. She's showing off all her keys. Look at the jingly keys. Look at them. No. But basically, she's the uh, movie gopher. Ah. Basically, Juniper's showing off that she has access to everything. She gets to work on the set, and of course, Twilight Rainbow are so very impressed. Meanwhile, the Pinkie Pie and the Spike are pursuing treats. Yes, because everyone goes to a movie just to enjoy the catering. Hey, catering. Food is good, yo. Food is good. Like, I've been missing food. Mm, Very possible. Let's see here. Pinkie Pie checks out three lunch buffets, six different kinds of fondue, Two rooms with nothing but candy, but no cupcake fountain. Oh, the tragedy. What is... First world problems. What is a cupcake fountain? I have no idea. It sounds like muffin button. <laughs> uh, Derpy's going to enjoy that one. Hey, if it worked for Goku, it can work for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but hey. The... Mm, muffin button. <laughs> uh, Namek's going to explode. Let me go back to the ship. Muffin button. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Uh, but anyway, but it is it is funny that truly only Spike and Pinky would go to a movie and focus more on the catering. True, true. Well, Spike's a dog, uh, and Pinky Pie here is a food addict. So yeah, that makes sense. I have a problem. <laughs> yeah, and talking about problems, right? We get to see Chestnut here being raged that she well doesn't have any of her chocolate bars. And I think something about Kent extending her contract and needs to go or something like that. It seems that she wants out of this. That's very, very bad. All I know is she's not her when she's hungry. Eat a Snickers. Yeah. <laughs> I love those commercials. Uh, remember the one with Betty White? Always. That was a fun one. So, anywho, we go on to the next scene with the volcano. Yay! I think the same scene that was interrupted by Rainbow Dash the first time. And the scene starts and oh no, the sets crash. Oh no. Oh no. Endangering lives. Yep. Uh, Ed Wood, we boop. Sorry. And so the director starts to have a meltdown. Yeah, that ain't good, Mo. You know, if your talent getting hurt, like, that's not good. That's not good. Like, any cliche thing would have happened. The director says, what could go wrong now? Rainbow Dash dashes in saying that, oh no, the prop for the movie is gone. The gasp. So, the director and everyone goes to the location where the prop are and sees that it's missing and and Rarity here says, couldn't you... Was it Rarity or Applejack? Like, either one of the two says, couldn't you make a new one and just continue on? And the director says that, no, we need a hearing's approval before we can proceed. And she is a hard girl to catch because, well, she's not available. You think that a writer 
who writes books every day would be easily contacted with, right? <laughs> like, she's not daring to in real life, is she? Like, huh? <laughs> you never know. In this world, you never know. But seriously, you try to interrupt a writer when they're in their mood. You're taking your life in your hands. I will ink this with your blood. <laughs> uh, but you're using the computer. That's okay. I'm sure there's a slot for that. <laughs> so anyway, the girls talk and decide how they want to try and solve this problem until a hooded figure kind of looms around and, well, uh, be really suspicious. Rainbow Dash activates her shield power and chases down after the mysterious figure, chasing her down everywhere and, well, not being able to catch her. It seems like this hooded figure is really, really sneaky. And then all of a sudden, you learn that there's no security on this set, in the studio. Yeah. Kind of, yes. It's all wrong, Norman. It's so very yeah. wrong. Yeah, but what's wrong here is somehow all of the seven girls here meet up in the same location, and suddenly a crew guy notices them and saying, What are you guys doing here? You're not in your costume. Hurry up, go to makeup. And somehow, they're in the Power Ponies. And... Does this guy look like Josh Sweden or something like that? Hmm. I don't see a lot of pictures of Josh Sweden, so I can't tell you. He looks like one of the directors for the Avengers. Well, it is the Power Pony, so why not? Yeah. I'm going to send you a picture just for, you know, just for last. So yeah, take a look-see. Looks really similar, right? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, indeed. Makes sense that they they designed that for the Power Ponies. Yeah. So yeah, it's the Power Ponies. I would have thought that they would be the power something other than ponies, but yeah, it's power, power ponies. Yeah, let's go with that. Mighty Morphin Power Ponies. Yeah. But still, um, it's like you mentioned before, it's fun to see the girls in the power pony outfit in human form, and <laughs> Sunset Shimmer is the maniac. And the, and the production assistant is fired, so we watch the guy's career go up in flames. Fun times. <laughs> Yeah, My Little Pony, a show for kids. But it's okay, because he's a faceless extra. <laughs> yeah, and the girls notice that, hey, who the figure's there? Let's chase him in a Scooby-Doo-esque montage. You need a montage. Montage! And somehow they ended up on the set of Stormy with a Side of Pudding. Somehow reminding me this is a parody of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Sounds good to me. Yeah. And somehow, the mysterious hooded figure throws a net on the girls, a gasp. And then she locks Rainbow Dash in a room. Which no, is like, I'm just remembering something. A tiny, yeah. tiny net. Wheel. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Kung Pao, it brings me joy. I can tell. <laughs> ah, nets will never be the same. I am very concerned, Silver. Why? i concerned I'm Silver. Why are you <laughs> the way you are? Because Norman's freaking me out, man. <laughs> oh, you were not there. You were not there. That's just the way he works. <laughs> Norman works in fanboys in fanboyish ways. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but anywho, like you mentioned before, Silver Rainbow Dash gets locked up. But before that, she chased down the mysterious hooded figure into a storeroom where the dress for Daring Do is stored and Rainbow Dash gets, well, locked up. She decides to call the girls, but remember that security took her phone away. Oh no. So she bangs the door and yeah, she's trapped. Actually, that's a pretty good excuse for why you can't just call someone. People don't often... Come up with that answer. Oh, yeah. Back in the days, it's logical because cell phones did not exist. Yes. But with this one, yeah, you're not allowed to have cell phone on the set because you might be taking pictures and leaking them out for fans to, you know, look at. Have you seen the production picture of Miss Marvel? Oh, la gasp. La gasp. Safi, but... you're not gasping. <laughs> oh, la gasp. <laughs> Uh, Excellent. But, hey, but anywho. Really? Uh, 
Uh, the other girls escape from the tiny, tiny net. <laughs> Uh, and decides to find Rainbow Dash. And finding Rainbow Dash is a matter of just following the puddings. Of course, Spike and Pinky, always on the case with pudding. Yay. And they found the storeroom that Rainbow Dash is locked in, and Twilight uses her zeal power to unlock the lock by... What did she... What was the specific line? Like, did you just make the lock uh, unlock itself or something like that? Let's see here. Checking the transcript. Did you just make that lock unlock itself? Nice. Oh, yes. Now, I, I would have thought that, you know, Twilight used her telekinesis to lockpick the door. But, yeah, close enough. You just make it unlock yourself. I am the master of this door. It reminds me of Doctor Who's in one of the radio plays I heard. Oh, why don't you unlock, um, use Sonic Screwdriver to unlock the door? Oh, and then has a conversation with the lock. <laughs> uh, that's a good um, radio play. But anywho, getting back on track. The girls go back to the director telling them that we found this in the store closet. And we kind of have a plan. So yeah, why not? Um, let's continue with the role and stuff. And director says, Juniper, go get me some coffee. Coffee! And we... Cut to a scene where the hooded figure appears, getting all of the prop. And Lagasse is Juniper, and she's caught by the main seven. Oh no! And her reasoning here know. is that... <laughs> uh, and her reasoning here is that by delaying the shoot, um, Nutmeg Chestnut... What was her name? Chestnut? Chestnut, was it? Yes, Chestnut. Chestnut Magnifico. So by delaying all of the shoot, Chestnut Magnifico... Overlaps her contract and kind of have to bail out and rendering the production without a star. And with that, they have to hire a new star. Juniper thinks that she would be taking the role. But in reality, no, because she doesn't have any movie experience. And you just sort of, yeah, why does she think she'll be the next choice? They'll get another actor or actress. Yeah. It's like, this plan is stupid. Stop being stupid. She probably... She'll get the role due to nepotism. Nepotism. No way. Okay, I'm just going to use this line from one of my favorite comedies of the early 80s. And it's UHF. Stupid! You're so stupid! Are you so stupid? Uh, but anywho. Juniper gets escorted out of the stage. Or the set. Or whatever it is. And... Chestnut here comes in looking happy and saying that, ah, oh, finally I can work on this project without any hindrance. The whatever thing I was working on before, I had to cancel it because they were misleading and jerks. So, shall we start? Wow. How bad were, th were they if Chestnut, who's not been the nicest character, is now a jerk? Why is she a jerk? Well, I mean, she's saying they're jerks. She's oh. been a jerk, and now she's saying they're jerks. How how bad do they have to be? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. But I think it was kind of a conflict of interest at the same time, too, because we were seeing one angle and now understanding the reason why she was kind of pissed off uh, the whole entire time is, well, to summarize, Chestnut here is an advocate for wildlife. And somehow there's a show that hired her to do a show about nature and bird's nest or something like that. And she thought, oh, it's something to do with her project. But, oh no, it's just to talk about bird nests around the world. So, no, there's something I do not want to do. And it's kind of misleading. So, I went out. Yes. Why do I feel like Fluttershy would be very upset? Uh, well, bird not... nests! No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anywho, uh, continuing on. Rainbow Dash says, Yo, director, since we help you save this project, could you put us in a role? And yet they, they do because that's, <laughs> again, this is the Saved by the Bell mentality, I think. I keep making reference to Saved by the Bell, but that's because it's the only one I can really reference. Mm, true. That, hey, who? Sorry. That, that or Superhero Samurai Cyber Squad, which you really don't want me referencing. Oh, man, that is a great show. I like it. The transformation scene, the fighting in the computer and stuff. <sighs> that was a good one. 
Watch the Japanese Grid Man. Oh man, I need to watch that one. I need, at least I need to know the original. But anywho, we go on to the next scene where technically is the shooting of the set. And uh, let's see, Daring Do runs. You know what? In the end, Rainbow Dash screws up this scene by screaming and they have to do it all over again. <sighs> Episode ends. And Silver, final thoughts. This is the start of Juniper Montage being a very lousy villain. Because... Yeah, her plan is just so dumb. Also, security on the set is quite awful. Oh, yeah, only one security guard is shown here. Mm-hmm. And we watched a production artist get fired. Huzzah! Yay! By Josh Whedon. I truly think that the real goal of this was to get them in the Power Ponies outfits. Let's, let's have them cosplay. My little cosplay, my little cosplay. That would have been a much better episode. <laughs> Uh, but, so, yeah. again, it's more invested than dance magic because there's a threat of failure that this movie will get closed down. We'll have more fired production artists. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, oh, well. But it's still not the most interesting. We're coming up on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seppi, what about you? I want to get to the next one. That's my final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. And as for me, I like this episode. <laughs> this episode was fun. Getting to see the inner workings of, well, quote unquote, a movie set was fun. Uh, looking at the, seeing the girls having fun in their own way was fun. And looking at the mystery solving was fun too, but I wish they could have done it better because, how do I put this? But if they do it in the style of Scooby Doo, it will be much better because they are kids and they have a dog and a talking dog too. See? It's like Scooby Doo, but they didn't really do that, did they? Uh, Scooby others. Natural did that better than they did. But then again, they had Scooby Doo. But then they were also looking for uh, Scooby Snacks <laughs> in the form of a of a muffin fountain. Oh, uh, true that, true that. Uh, mm, but... Muffin button. <laughs> uh, but anywho, let's see. Um, yes, I, I enjoyed it, and Juniper was an interesting character, but she was dumb. Her plan was. Dumb. Yes. Very. Dum da dum dum. Dum. <laughs> so, anywho, moving on to the last special, My Little Pony Equestria Girls Movie Magic. In this special, Sunset Shimmer returns to Equestria when her magic journal runs out of pages and she brings Starlight Glimmer back with her to the human world. Meanwhile, a bitter juniper montage finds a mirror enchanted with equestrian magic. So. First impressions, Silver. Well, this one is probably the most interesting because it features the most direct threat. Juniper is now uh, wielding magic she can't control. And true to form, it seems er anyone other than the human six, human seven who get equestrian magic, they all become power mad lunatics. And this time it plays to Juniper's delusions. So it makes sense. But I remember this was at a very tender development in Starlight's introduction. Basically, everyone's like, oh, she's replacing the main cast. And here she is. She she defeats Juniper pretty much on her own. After Sunset does something rather dumb. So we'll, uh, we'll get to that in full. But this is the one I enjoyed the most. All right. Seppi, what about you? You've been hyping this one up. Human Starlight is just so freaking adorable. I love her. Also, a lot of pistachio ice cream. Why, I don't know. Uh, I, I uh, like uh, the idea of, you know, Starlight coming into the human world. And, you know, just being Starlight. Just that opening scene once she comes in the human world is glorious. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Jennifer Montage was there, too. <laughs> uh, but who cares? It's Starlight! Then again, not a lot of people would agree with me because not a lot of people like Starlight. I mean, I get why, but still. Uh, I think, uh, you know what, uh, we'll save that for later. And as for me, I like this episode. This episode is a lot of fun. Getting to watch the conclusion to the three-part special was fun. And let's see, the introduction of Starlight going to the human world was fun. Um, looking at pony version of Sunset is fun too. 
It's just like it, this episode touched everything I want in an episode. Like you want to see uh, Starlight go back to Equestria and see what you call this, uh, see her in her pony form because you don't. It's a rarity. No, <laughs> uh, yes, and you want to see more things happening with the pony universe going to the human world, like. Well, Starlight Glimmer going into the human world. So that's a lot of fun. So this episode touches on all of those in a good way. So let's head into the review. So we start off with a very pissed off Juniper being all diva-like because if it weren't for those girls and their magic mud, I would have become daring do. Oh, they're everywhere. They're ruining my life. Although they are, if I had to wear a hat like that, I'd be pretty ticked off as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why, not? Why not? Actually, I'm I'm flashing back. Uh, I worked at Albertsons for a, a summer in high school, and they made you wear these polo shirts with exploding grocery bags all over them. Albertson? Uh, okay, that's uh, kind of a, gr- a grocery store. I've never even heard of this. What? Ah, is it blue? Is their logo blue? Yeah. Okay, googling it, and I found it. Yeah, it's just a grocery store, but they make you wear these silly clothes. Well, do they have a giant eagle down where you're from, or no? A, gi- a giant eagle? Uh huh. Do they make someone dress up in an eagle costume and like wave a sign? Actually, no, they don't. All right, then they're kinder than most. Uh, Silver, so I think that's the old uniform because I'm looking at the new one, and they don't show what you're describing because they they look kind of uniformal, like. A blue polo with the logo on the left side of the sleeve. Yeah, well, this is this was the courtesy clerks, and this was in my high school days. So yes, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, stupid gimmicks like that don't work. They do not. Anywho, uh, let's see. Where was I again? Yes, Juniper. Juniper went to. Uh, she's kind of at work, but lollygagging because she doesn't want to work there. So she stumbles upon a sunglass store and tries out some sunglass. Then somehow a mirror is enchanted by equestrian magic. And yeah, it seems that the mirror is showing her what she wants to see. Ooh, and said mirror shows her in her diva form. Ooh. Yes, this is what she'd be if only they'd hired her for a role for which she was not qualified. Oh, no. And she, well, pays for the mirror and hits off because said mirror knows her and said mirror understands her. Oh. So is she really a goth in disguise? <laughs> Probably. But enough goffing around because we have Sunset Shimmer to look at. And she's writing a letter to Twilight Sparkle. That's Princess Twilight Sparkle saying that she's so stressed out because of this magic thingy and and she has to be ready 24-7 because she got no idea, blah, 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 and she's so stressed out. Oh, my, the pages of the book also kind of almost done. Oh, no. Yep, she's running out. Running out of that ink. I have to point something out because in some fan fiction, they've talked about the book running out of pages and it was so, so dramatic, like, Oh no, there's no, uh, the connection between Equestria and uh, the human world is almost broken because the pages are not there and I got no way to talk to Princess Twilight. Oh no, and stuff. They've written it so dramatically. And in this one says, Sunset, come to Equestria, I'm going to give you a new book. So yay, problem solves. There you go, that's severely anticlimactic, but come on. Sunset in pony form, huzzah. I know. Ooh. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, you want to talk about Juniper for a bit? Or should we just skip her? Because, yeah. Yeah, skip her. She's not worth it. Yeah. Long story short, she knows how to use. Well, she discovers that the mirror is a glorified vacuum cleaner. Yep. Well, that, that sucks. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, anywho, Sunset Shimmer goes to the statue. Well, where the statue was before. The base of the statue? That's what you call it? Yeah. When are they going to get that horse back? I don't know, man. Probably later on. Who knows? See, come on, Cantalot High School. Get on your high horse. <laughs> so, 
Sunset goes through the portal and ends up in Princess Twilight's library, which, well, <laughs> I'm I'm wondering, um, where is this portal thingy in the main show? Because the library looks the same. I just don't see it around. Well, clearly it's just off to the left. <laughs> we, every time they've set up the shot, the portal has always just been off to the left. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anywho, we get to see Sunset Shimmer back in pony form. Yay! And meeting up with Lim Glam. Yay. Although this Hello, is the best I'm Zim Sorry. I spelled that off, Kate Friend. Anyways. But one of the funniest parts is like, uh, Sunset collides with a pile of books. She looks up like, Twilight, is that you? <laughs> no, Starlight Glimmer. Ember's <laughs> off in the distance saying, See how easy it is! <laughs> See? I'm not the only one! I'm not speciesist! You're speciesist! <laughs> See? I'm not the only one! <laughs> uh, but anywho, we get to see the standard moment of Sunset trying to acclaim to her new form. Uh, and... Glim Glam here looking at her real weird like because um why are you standing like Lyra? That's so strange. And yeah, culture culture shock. She got so used to being a human. Yep. The look on her face when she gets to do unicorn magic again. It's like, ooh, I can do this again. Woo! And just looking at her like the interaction between uh Glim Glam and Sunny here is just so awesome because Glim Glam gives book to Sunny and Sunny holds out her hooves expecting to reach it but couldn't because hooves. <laughs> Look out, sunlight shippers. We have... Well, crap, how do you uh, ship starlight and sunset? With gusto. Uh, <laughs> yay. But anywho, Glim Glam asks Sunny here how is it in the other world and stuff. And long story short, Glim Glam wants to go. And Glim Glam says, you know what? Uh, what Princess Twilight doesn't know won't hurt her, right? Yeah? <laughs> and yeah, Glim Glam goes to the human world. Woo! Of course, she makes the uh, the face of boundless curiosity. How can you <laughs> say no to that? It's got hearts and stars in it. I know, that's so cute. Like, you could never say no to those eyes. It's beyond the puppy dog pout. I mean, even Spike and Puppy Farm couldn't give up. That adorable. Yep. Indeed. So, yay. Uh, Gleamy goes to the human world and Sunny says, Play cool, act cool, don't pull too much attention to yourselves. And the first thing she does is go on all fours. <sighs> nope. <laughs> Gleamy, that's not the position you want to be doing around in public. Nope. That's something for private. Oh, Norman. Oh, my. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. I went Norman, there. When have, have you been reading the Pony Sutra? <laughs> uh, a bit. <laughs> uh, but anyway. anyway. Yeah, but anywho, uh, we go back to uh, Montage. Uh, sorry, we go back to Juniper, who's trying to use the vacuum cleaner again. Uh, until the main six here stumbles upon her and says, You're working here? Okay. That's interesting. And they get into a scuffle. And Juniper here discovers the trigger word, and it's an I wish button. Which is kind of funny, because that is exactly what uh, Twilight Velvet in the original My Little Pony would do to start her ma magic. She'd go, I wish, I wish, I wish. Oh, wow. So that might be a, a little bit of a callback. Ooh. What was that scenario there in that one? What, what happened there? Well, she was being chased by uh, T-Rex lizard people army. Or guards, and she just do. I wish, I wish, I wish, and she teleport away, and they'd collide with the wall, and it'd be funny until Applejack got turned into a dragon. Oh wow! So Applejack got to rock the dragon, but she became a mindless beast. Oh. So yes, she rocked the dragon look, but then you kind of wonder why does the universe hate Applejack so? <laughs> no comment. <sighs> and well, let's go into something happier moments. Like Gleamy eating ice cream. Yay! That's so cute. Her face is all messed up because she doesn't know how to eat ice cream properly. <laughs> uh, yes, this is just fun. Oh, also there's this whole thing where Gleamy's talking to Sunny about um, just roll with it because you can't really 
prepare for any and all problems. You know, you get rolled with the punches and whatnot. Ah, uh, but that's easy to say, hard to put into practice. Yep. So yeah, we got to see this interaction. And if you're wondering what happened to the main five, we get to see that they're in this some sort of white place location without any walls. Even Pinkie Pie proves it by shaking the camera. Well, I have to correct you, Norman. It's it's the Human Six. Ah, yes, the Human Six. Twilight's in there too. Did I say Main Six? You said Main Five. Ah, yes. All right. But anywho, um, yes. The girls are just wondering what happened, where they are, and whatnot, and suddenly raining chocolate balls. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which, at least for Pinky, that's pretty. That's a pretty happy event. This is just Juniper being a horrible person. Yes. I could use stronger language, but we don't need Sweetie Bot yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, she, she doesn't need to be in this one, as for now. But I have to mention something. If you're catching this on the DVD, which was done by who now? I'm forgetting the DVD. Shot Factory? Yeah, Shot Factory. Thank you. Yeah, um, they screwed up. They screwed up bad. Oh, uh, what, what did they do wrong? The colors. If you're looking at the uh, My Little Pony wiki page for FIM wiki, you get to see the gallery for this episode we're talking about. They're using the screenshots for that here. And look at Fluttershy in one example. It's in the Trap in Limbo scene. Just look at Fluttershy. Her color sucks really, really bad. Oh, it's a little washed out? Yes. And somehow if you get the TV copy of this, her color there is pretty good. Well, that's just the ways of it. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. a, bit, I'm a bit disappointed. I'm a bit um, peeved. But hey, um, Vegas can be choosers. And yes, we move on to the next scene where we get to see Gleamy and Sunny go to the theater and discover Juniper is there. And she's wearing Fluttershy's brooch. Sunny confronts her and asks where are her friends. And Juniper's being coy about it. And, you know, I have mind reading power, so I'm going to read your mind. But this is where she do does something stupid. After reading said mind, she should dive out of the way. Instead, she just fl flings an accusation. and Oh, look, she got trapped in the mirror herself. Oh, a lot it ha. <laughs> well, that's a pickle. And with that, all of the seven are trapped in limbo while Gleamy here is gasping and looking rather panicky because this is not what I planned for. All I wanted to do is just have fun, eat ice cream, and watch this thing called a movie. Oh no. And yeah, continuing on uh, with Sunny in the uh, mirror limbo thingy. It seems that all of them combined there activates the mirror's power to turn Juniper into a giant woman. Like, I think I have a song for this. All I want to do is see you turn into a giant woman. A giant woman. Don't sing with me. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined it, Norman. You ruined it. I don't know. No. But anywho, talking about ruining stuff, uh, Juniper goes on a rampage where she thinks everybody's admiring her, asking for her autograph. But nah, in reality, they're scared. They're running away. And Gleamy here kinds of like the hero and grabs the mirror out of Juniper's hand and, well, tries to talk the big giant woman down. Although the way she's hiding from Juniper, very reminiscent of uh, Queen Chrysalis. So I... I feel like we're retreading ground very close together. Yeah, true, but if if you really think about it, right, the scenario on both sides kind of is similar because in the Changeling world or country, what was it called? Changeling Kingdom, was it? Changeling Kingdom. Yeah, in the Changeling Kingdom, uh, Gleamy here doesn't have her magic because, well, there's a magic dampener over there. Now, in the human world, she has no magic because she's a human. Human don't have magic unless you're Doctor Strange. Unless you're Benedict Cumberbatch. Yay! And everyone's a fashion victim. <laughs> Yay! So a victim of your fashion because my my cloak will throttle you. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, Gleamy here talks the Juniper down and somehow in some miracle, Juniper says, yeah, Okay, I'll uh, make this last wish. And 
make things right. Wow, that was easy. And so the day is saved not by cooperating with your friends, but by leaving it all up to one. Yes, that was Which kind I, of... <laughs> when, they, when the trailer or the teasers came out for this, this, the summary made it sound like Starlight and Sunset would work together. The fact that it all came down to Starlight is just like, ah, I feel like that's a mistake. Kind of. like, And it, at the same time, too, it's like leaving it all up on Juniper's hand like what was the guarantee that she would do what she said like what's stopping her from you know backstabbing you maybe get her to do a pinkie pie promise how do you break one of those you don't Uh, but anywho um, Juniper says like I'm sorry uh, what I did was wrong and I I don't think you guys would forgive me and Gleamy says I manipulated an entire town into giving up their talents so they would then think they were special and twilight here says overpowered by a magic i couldn't control and created a rift between two worlds and almost destroyed both of them in the process and sunny here says turn an entire school into my own personal zombie army in hopes of conquering a distant pony world and yeah juniper here is like see what and pinkie pie here has the best line wow we are a really forgiving group and they all share a laugh. Huzzah! <laughs> uh, and in the next scene, we get to see them interacting, being all friendly, like, and yay! Um, Twilight sends a message to Sunny and says that, hey, um, the best way to learn is to do it, uh, to experience it and do it yourself. So, Gleamy here can stay for a while. So, enjoy yourself. Yay, have fun and stuff. And with that, the episode ends. So, Let's hit into final thought. Silver, what do you think, my friend? This one was uh, the best of the the three specials in my eyes. It had a very real menace, a rising tension, uh, very real stakes as everyone was trapped in this void. I am just sorry that Starlight... This was in a phase where to make Starlight look good, everyone else had to be depowered or shuffled off screen. And... Well, it makes Starlight look good, but then the next step is we really need her to integrate with the rest of the cast and work with them. That's happening on the pony side of things, but this was at Equestria Girls one shot. And so we never got to see Sunset and Starlight really work together, which is too bad because at one point I considered them almost the identical character, but they've changed, but they've grown a lot since then. So I'd like to see them play off each other more. True that, true that. And in all honesty, the interaction between them is very amazing and awesome. Like, you want to see more of that. You want to see those two interact more than what's given because it's a rarity. And I'm not using that word because rarity is in the show. Because it's true. Uh, seeing another character from the... Uh, how do I put this? This is considered a crossover. And me knowing entertainment, when a show crosses over with another show... It brings a lot of pull. It brings a lot of attraction. A good example is Avenger. Those other heroes from other series coming together to make one big show or movie. So that's awesome, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, Silver. Uh, do you have more to talk about? No, nope, I think I've said all that I need to say. All right, then. So, Sappy, what about you? Starlight as a human is adorable! Yes, indeed. That's pretty much all I really have to say. I'm I'm terrible at these things. I apologize. It's okay. So anywho, and as for me, I like this episode. This episode was fun. I like the interaction with the characters. I like the story. I like the introduction of Gleamy to the human world. I, I like this a lot. Like, this is a fun episode. And I wish there's more interaction with Grim Glam and Shim Sham. Because that is fun. And I do wish that we get to see the Pony 6 come into the human world and vice versa. At least we get to see some kind of chaotic chaos story where there's this thing where the... Um, how do I put this? Fish out of water story, but more exciting and more fun. So a world swap episode. Yes. Although personally, I'd like the, the main six go missing so the human... Six have to take their place for a day. Or three. <laughs> Something like that. 
And with that, um, episode ends. So, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, seeing as how Juniper just had a uh, change of heart and we've been witnessing Starlight doing her thing as the new team member, I think it's time we talked about Sixth Ranger Syndrome. And also, as sort of a parallel, the Re- Reformation of Villains. Yay, that's awesome. Because, well, in media, there's always that um, bad guy turns good guy and they integrate with the team. For this one, we get an example of Starlight Glamour and Juniper montage becoming part of the, well, or becoming friends. So that's good. And there's a lot of them in other media. So we're going to talk about that one in the future. Yay. So if you guys would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you guys. You've been really, really awesome to me. And Sappy, where can the good people find you? You can go to coffee.com slash AMA Christy and give me coffee. I need my coffee. Oh. Somebody give me coffee. Coffee. Right. <laughs> and Silver, what about you? Oh, you can find me lots of places. I'm on DeviantArt. I'm on, I post every Wednesday on Equestria Daily. There's my YouTube channel. And I have a Patreon going to support uh, mostly the, the YouTube channel, but it helps in various endeavors. True that, true that. Like, those videos are not going to make themselves. Indeed. Indeed. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sinzo. I am Cecilia Quill. And I have been a Safi. And we'll see you guys next week with another episode in Yes Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, if the human six go into the pony world and become ponies, would that mean it's their persona? Oh my! Never see it coming. Turns out all the main humane six are, are furries. <laughs> the fans would go wild. <laughs>